morning and good afternoon, depending on wherever you at the time of the recording. This is episode 174 of the Restricted Zone Podcast, man. I'm with a great crew today, a three-man crew. Kyrie, you introduce yourself to the subscribers and people out there, man. Hey, what's going on, viewers? What's going on, Restricted Zone family? Glad to be back, man. Let's get to another good episode. Got some you know it. season tomorrow, man. Let's get to it. I'm ready. Are you right? Let's get it, man. NBA season starts tomorrow. Rick. Listen, introduce yourself to the subscribers and people, man. Talk to us, man. Right, right. Hello, hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? Um, <laughs> I hope this, this episode gets everyone at a good time. I'm very happy and excited for the NBA season. It's, it's right upon us here for tomorrow. Um, I hope everyone enjoys and has a, uh, a great season, you know, some great moments. You know, just enjoy the game. Whether you're a fan of players, team, or for everyone. <laughs> Man, you know what? This is basketball. I don't know if you guys check the women's NBA finals. I was watching it. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, oh, I was yeah. watching it. Yeah. I was watching yeah. it. I, I man, did. I did. I did. <laughs> Talk about dramatic, bro. Them last Yo. Talk about dramatic. Listen, I mean, it wasn't in the play. I know we didn't even play it because it won me at, you know, WNBA, but I just got to talk about how exciting the game is. Uh, Man, that game was electrifying. The series itself was better than the NBA finals, in my opinion. Uh, why is everything yeah, it, better it than was, NBA Finals? It was good. It was good. You, you know, right. the, series, the series was real cool. My fault. I'm going to cut. Go ahead, Kyle. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, okay. for at least for me, like through the WNBA, I know it came down to that to, uh, in the last game to a controversial call. For, but, a, but for the most part, it seems like the refs let the let the ladies play a little bit more. I feel like they let them play. Uh, I can see why Minnesota Lynx felt like they were because it was some egregious yeah. missed calls. Yeah. Like, bla- yeah. I mean, we got to be they let, they let them play. They, yeah, they, they let did. them play. They, they let them play. So that's the gift and curse of letting them play. You, you're you going to miss some egregious calls. So that's just going to come down to it. But overall, hell of a game. Hell of a yeah. series. Hell of a John matchup. Jones and, uh, and Stewie, yo, they came up big. John- uh, <laughs> INS wasn't they playing did. well at all. Mm-hmm. I and let's go get Brooklyn. them out of play. Like, I go on like the, the basketball Twitter and it's like she's getting so much hate, but I think people were really short term memory loss. She hit the biggest yeah. shot that even Game led three. to them getting yeah. points. So Game it's like, three, wait yeah. a minute, they're not right. But you know, it's all about what you've done for me recently. That's yeah. always what it's been. And well, uh, she got a ring recently, so she got a ring <laughs> recently. I love that. Oh, listen to me. I can't listen to me. Who really has anything to say? And yeah, right. so what? She shot one foot. Yes, that's atrocious. I think that's five percent. Is it maybe ten yeah, percent? I, I believe it was like one for nineteen. I believe. Yeah, like, it, right. was listen, yeah granted, it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. No, I'm not trying. You know, that was bad. Absolutely bad. She, but every- she ain't fooled though. She was like, I was like, no, was like, I was no, him. I was she, she didn't. And, 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 oh yeah, she didn't oh, fold. Yeah. She she's Kobe's mentality through and through. Mm-hmm. Like she's you. gonna she's got <laughs> she's gonna shoot it. And I I was you gotta love too at the end of the day. And Stewie did with did her thing. The rookie on on on, on the. Listen, that whole series, Kayla McBride, just uh, Courtney Williams, and just yeah. Collier, like oh uh, yeah, yeah she, she, she was she was getting busy in the paint. She was getting busy in the paint. She, for sure. her Attack footwork, in the paint. her yeah. footwork, yeah. Yo, yeah, footwork, she, she, yeah. Collier, yeah. the yeah. footwork. She played. She reminds me of Paolo a little bit. She she plays a little bit like okay. Paolo. Okay. Like in terms of the footwork, okay. and yeah. like the foot, yeah, his no, great that, that, that footwork. Yeah, I can yeah. definitely see that. Yeah, yeah she and mommy Apollo, and I'm thinking, oof, that's a foul. Yeah, that's foul. She, she's forward. a competitor too. I can't wait to see, mm-hmm. like, with a defensive end especially. I can't wait to see how she comes, like the mentality she comes in next season with, bro. Because she's, <laughs> she's a competitor. Yo, she she's gonna turn up next year. That's why I'm so yeah. excited. And this draft class, the 2025 Women NBA Draft. Now, for those the casuals, Juju Watkins is she won't be eligible to. Mm. I believe 2026, 2027, maybe. Yeah, right. So, so, yeah. yeah, So, and she probably will stay till she has no incentive to leave after her junior year, basically. So, she'll probably be staying to her senior year just because of NIL. But this draft class, Paige, you got a lot. Kiki, you got uh, AZ. As he eligible, she goes. It's yo, the NBA, WNBA. Everything is like skyrocketing right now, and I'm definitely looking forward to the future of the league. I don't know what you guys thoughts overall. I mean, you guys get some of your input, but you know, I'm gonna give the floor to you guys because I just wanted to bring it. That wasn't the plan. I know we ain't planned it, but sure. just had to throw that in there. Um, I'll step in real quick. Uh, go ahead. So, I, I'll say, you know, you know, shout out to both teams, you know, the uh, Minnesota and, and New York for, for a great that was a great WNBA uh finals. Um, I, the one thing I really got to point out is the defense. 
It's pretty cheap in, in, in the la- this last game, too, game five. But I, I say, you know, Minnesota's defense was real. You know, they, they, they get to you. They, they make you work. And, they, and you know, they make Brianna work for, you know, Sabrina. Like, they, you know, they own you. And, and I, that's the one thing I really say. You know, it's always good when you – you know, I know everyone, you know, whatever sport it is you like, you know, offense is always good to watch, you know, whether it's receivers, catching balls, players scoring. But, you know, the defensive side of the ball, it got to get the same amount of respect and love. And, you know, we all know that sometimes defenses with championships. We, we all know and see that. Yeah. And it was just very good to see some defensive performance in there. And the one thing I say about Sabrina, real quick, that you know, when you watch her now, obviously we see, you know, maybe because the way she shoots threes, you can kind of see okay, we see a similar with the NBA style with Steph right. Curry. And there's a reason why we see so much of that happening. We saw the All Star game and everything. Right. I'll say that you know, no matter what, and we've seen Curry have bad games. We've seen him shoot the, the terrible percentage also. And of Sabrina, course. you know, well, you know what. She knows who she is for the team, and it's a big moment. She's going to keep shooting, though. And that's really what shooters do. You're going to keep shooting the ball. And I like what the interview said at the end. You know, there's more ways to impact the game than just shooting. And that's the one thing a shooter always got to remember about that also, which is good no, to hear, though. No matter what. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm saying I'm honestly just looking forward to the next wave of women ba- women's basketball that we uh, that we got coming up. Um, I tuned in a lot more than I have in the past this season, and I could definitely say mm-hmm. I came away impressed. Um, watching the NBA for so long, it's easy and it's kind of normalized tuning into a game in like early January and having a bunch of guys out or and just having the game mailed in, sort of say, because it's a long season. I think with the WNBA, it being such a short season and less teams, of course, um, I think that competitive nature runs deep because it gives you it's less time for you to make a make a spot or get that seeding for a playoff spot. So you I haven't really seen teams mail it in or I haven't seen really, really seen the ladies like mail it in or like not give full effort in any game that I watched this season. And um that was the thing that that uh, that really impressed me this year watching and um I, I can't wait to see what they get, they got next coming up. Especially with the expansion coming in. Um mm-hmm. I think uh Toronto got a team uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm, I'm blanking right now. Golden Come, State, I, it, the, yeah, the, the, Val, the, Valkyries, Valkyries. That's I'm, I'm blanking on the cities. I'm blanking uh, on the cities. I know there was at least a couple really, teams there. I know. I know there was like, a couple. The, it, the, it, it's going to be more because there are a lot of talented players that aren't on rosters right now. Mm-hmm. And it's like watching them in college, like, man, she's not on the roster. But yeah. it's like, it's not, sometimes it's not even better. Them not, they just don't even have. Like the plays, they don't got the spot. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's why you see the talks with the NBA and expansion now because the same can be said about the NBA free agency pool. There's a lot year after I mean, year. I, but listen, uh, Colin, year after year is a bigger pool of guys that were on teams, or it just seems like not too long ago they were just producing and they can't find a spot on a roster. Like Markel Fultz, for example, like can't find a spot on a roster. So, is the team looking for Markel Fultz? Lonnie Walker's a situation I can understand. That's, but I was just about to say that. Lonnie really, Walker. Kenny, I was Kenny just about to it. say that. Right. Like, are they looking for a Markel yeah, Fultz? Like, I, might yeah. get, I might get laughed at for this, but Jalil Okafor. Like, p- people haven't been watching what he's done overseas and, and did it at G League. Well, I'll be the one to admit. I certainly haven't watched him overseas, so I don't want to say anything. He really got himself. Yeah, I did. And yeah. I, I personally think, like, but he, he got cut by Indiana. But I'm just saying, like, guys are like, like that, that, I think need an extra shot or just need that extra time to showcase what they got. I, I think like that pool has gotten bigger over the past couple of years. Look, I'll say this, and I happy you kind of happy you brought up Lonnie Walker. I remember watching him from the Spurs, mm-hmm. and you know he went over to the what the Lakers after that. He had a good year with the Lakers, and he signed. I watched the, I watched a lot of Nets games too as a part of a Nets fan. Also, I watched a lot of him with the Nets last year. Man, he was someone that just came off the bench. He, He's a lot of buckets, mid-range shots. He get, he can shoot. He can score. Lonnie Walker is a, definitely a bucket. And, you know, when I saw the Celtics pick him up, I was like, wow, they add him to that bench. And, obviously, we know the Celtics is loaded. They, they didn't have no use for him. He's, he's a free agent now. Um, personally, it would be nice to see a contending team pick him up on the bench. He might not have to play a lot of minutes, but Lonnie Walker could definitely play in this league. It's, it's, I find it a little bit crazy that he's not on an NBA team right now. Maybe he'll get picked up soon, but. Very talented player. I'm I mean, I, I agree. No, the only, only thing that was wrong with him last year that he kept, was he kept getting injured. He would get hurt and yeah. come right back, find his stride, <laughs> come off the bench like he was saying, was electrifying, and he would get hurt yeah. again. Yeah. It really messed up his flow. 
and I, I think that's maybe why, to a certain extent, maybe lesser extent, but it's just to a, to an extent. That's probably why some teams is you know the injury history is just too much. Yeah. It's like all right, we could invest because if you sign a guy to the contract now, every money is it it it's it, worth it. That second apron, the new rules they put in the CBA, I love it. Some people hate it, but it's like it's really forcing teams to either build like you're gonna really build through the draft, mm -hmm. and it's gonna really come down to whether or not. And we might see the same franchises be in the lottery for the next couple. If their drafting skills have been awful, I mean, hey, like that's just it is what it is. Uh, but it's definitely you got the injury history, of Lonnie Walker, and I feel like Lonnie Walker is a productive player. At the end of the day, I don't see why he wouldn't. He shouldn't be on a contender team. But the injury history, to a lesser or a greater extent, definitely kind of plays a part into it because there's nothing about his character that would make a team not want to so, yeah, take sure. a chance on him, right? So definitely. I mean, hey, uh, go ahead, Kyrie. I know you, you had to say something. Go ahead. No, that's that's all I was saying. I was kind of tying that expansion talking with the NBA to the WNBA expanding because, like you said, there's some players in the WNBA. Like for example, I seen Daisha Fair get away from the uh, from the um, the Las Vegas Aces in the beginning of the season. She's the third leader scorer all time in NCAA history. For one they season. just, but now in, in her case, and, and I I don't want to. She really was just all strict. She was one of those. She gets you buckets. She's a bucket, yeah. But, she, but it was it was oh, little. That's the thing. I understand that. No, well, I there's some small players right now in the WNBA. So it's like she didn't provide nothing else outside the, yeah. the, the shot making. Mm -hmm. And then it's like the WNBA is way more ruthless than the NBA. Yeah. So it's like if you can't find because everyone can score in the league, it's just what do you do outside of scoring? So it's right. like yeah. And it's tough, man, because I thought she was going to – I thought, shit, she probably could have helped – the Aces probably in the playoffs. It was a couple of times their offense yeah, was atrocious. Yeah, offense were really stale. Mm. Like Chelsea and, 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 yo, Jackie yeah. Young was <laughs> – and Chelsea Gray was coming from an injury, so people forget that part. She was injured throughout mm -hmm. the season. So, And I felt like, man, someone like – and she came across my head. So funny enough that you brought her up like, man, they could have used her. Yeah. But they didn't even play their bench. So I don't know what's going on with the Aces. I don't know what's going on. But go ahead, Kyrie. No, that was all, bro. Just sounding good. Yeah. Play. I mean, listen, man. WNBA looking forward to that. Can't wait. Oh, college ball, too. I don't know about you, Kyrie. I'm going to be paying attention to the women's college basketball just as much as the men's. I'm just going to let you know. Absolutely. I'm going to be paying attention just as much as that. All right, Kyrie. Go ahead and let you know. Take it over. No, so I figured we just we just freestyle it tonight, and I kind of wanted to start off with um, we seen a lot of guys get paid today. A lot of that twenty twenty one NBA draft class, Jalen Johnson got paid, Jalen Green got paid, yeah. Sagoon just got his contract, Sagoon, yep, and my boy like, oh, Sagoon got that bread, yeah, Sagoon, oh, yeah, but yeah. Got yeah. Got yeah. You know what we got to talk about but that I wanna, particularly. Uh, I want to speak first on Orlando Magic's guard Jalen Suggs because um he got off to a little bit of a slow start and me and Liz, I wish he got was able to get onto this episode because we we was talking about it a lot. Um he got off to a very slow start his first couple of years was was injured battled with uh, efficiency issues turned the ball over a lot and um was just really a, a, a crash out type of player like he 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 didn't know how to channel that aggression in, in the right ways a lot. And um, he, we, in this past season with the research, with this uh, resurgence of the Orlando magic, you see him play a, a, a big part of that too and clean up his game a little bit. He put up like 12 points, about three or four boards, a couple dimes, but we seen him like gain his chops on the defensive end. He became one of the best on ball defenders in the league, like overnight. And um, I just want to ask you guys, if you, truly believe he was worth the 150 mil that the um the, the Orlando Magic extended him because uh, uh we know when it comes to these rookie extensions <clears throat> they're not paying them for the player they are now they're paying them for the player they projecting to be when they 26 27 he he he, he Go ahead, Alan. So, so you're all so how old is Jalen Suggs? I think he's like foremost. 22 like 22 right. yeah he's early 20s early 20s for sure so early, just yeah, off 20s, the strength yeah. of that so this, this is your three four well, you yeah, no, this is like your invest because this is what I'm gonna say about Jalen Suggs. I'm because mm -hmm. you and me watch high school hoops, we've been following him, high school, college, all that. We followed him, he's the Magic's best perimeter guard defender, like by far. It's not mm -hmm. 
when he's the one guarding their best player. If not him, sometimes Franz Wagner. Yep. Between those two. And now and they got KCP. You keep that in mind. KCP's a little older. I don't know if he's still got the little, you know, step into his foot, but he's a good defender. He's not a liability. And that's what the Magic needed. So that's – and he can shoot the hell out of the ball. So, boom, you get two sure. and one with that. But Jalen Suggs, defensively, you don't even got to worry about effort, IQ, anything on the end. He's already got that and already, like you said, 22. You're banking on that work ethic he put on that defensive end. You're going to bank on him that somehow he takes, if not this year, at least by the next year, he takes that offensive leap. Because I think Jalen Suggs has shown that he can, look how much work he's put on the defense. Because Jalen Suggs, not, I want to say he was a bad defender. But he ain't played defense like this kind of It's not what Jalen Suggs is known for. At Gonzaga, he was he wasn't this disciplined. I'll give you that. He was a pretty mm-hmm. good defender, but he wasn't this disciplined. Right. Let's just I, yeah. I, yeah, he, I yeah, because he the defense that when I watched him play last season, like the past season, like his defense, IQ and intensity, and just he just knows how to it's almost on, you know, it's like, yeah, he didn't show that in high school and, and, and Gonzaga. So that's he worked on that. Mm-hmm. I'm they're banking on that work ethic on the authors of that. And is Jalen Suggs? I would do it. I would give him the contract. But I would see why some people wouldn't give him the contract. I can see why. Okay. It's all about perspective. And it's really on what he's shown you. Those, those, how many years he's been with the Magic? He got drafted what the year before Chet, or was it? He was, he got drafted uh, 2021. 2021, 2021, so the year yeah. before Chet. So, <laughs> three years of you. So, the Magic gotta feel good about him enough to say, All right, let's let's give him this contract. And I would, me personally, I would do it, but I understand the other side of why you wouldn't give him the contract because offensively, he hasn't been horrible, but it's just surprising how his offense hasn't popped. It's kind of crazy because that's the thing we all thought defensively was not what we thought it'd take him some time to get to that point. He's mastered that defensively. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say he realized you're not never going to be the top three scorer on your team. He realized that. So what can I contribute outside of scoring? Well, he found his niche, and he's that guy. So now offensively, maybe he kind of strayed a little bit off that, maybe – you know, I, I don't know, but the offense is what we saw in high school and college ain't nearly the way it is when we got to the NBA. Granted, the NBA is a lot more, it's a whole different ball game in college and high school, but it's just surprising that the role is kind of reversed for him. The defense is what was a selling point, not the offense. But we see that a lot of times with guys when they come into the league. Yeah, I definitely see what you mean, Colin. And I want to touch on a lot of what you said. I want to hear what Ricky got to say first, though. What do you think about Jalen uh, getting out a hundred fifty million uh, dollar contract? I and think personally give it to him. I I, pre, I, I think both the uh, carry appreciate. You. I think you and Colin both gave some great answers um, and responses to uh, Jalen's contract. I think, and I think you, I'm gonna go based off of what you said there. And and really, I think a lot of these players, and especially Jalen Suggs, they get played. They get paid really because of the potential. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the current play of, of, of what that player is on the team right now, but the potential of, of who that player can possibly be, whether it's next year, two years from now. And I think it's part of really, would you want that player to potentially go to be like a restricted free agent and have another team? Like, say if he played way mm-hmm. better this year and yep. another team came out with a crazy offer that you probably yep. – it depends how your roster construction will be in the pricing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Contact right so there, Rick. So it's it's a lot that you you kind of have to go into when you're paying these players, and mm-hmm. that's why we saw a lot of players get paid today. But Jalen Suggs in particular, I think he's a real good defensive player. Um, I think the offensive game at some point is going to come. I, players got to work on it. No, you, I mean he's 22, Rick. Just for like, sure, so, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't know if it's just me a little bit. I'm not saying he's exactly like this player, but I don't know if for some reason he remind me a little bit of like right now at this current part, like oh, a Josh. Who, who? Hart. So, uh, really? So for some I... reason. Kyrie, I could have sworn he was going to say Derek White. I don't know why. They're all in the same family. They're all in the same family. I look at that as almost the same way. Believe me, I'm a big fan of Derek White since the Spurs days. And I look at all those players as the same way. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, and look, Jalen Suggs, maybe he might even show me even more why he is that type of Derek White, Josh Hart. Like, he's that player you want on your team. 
Yeah. He might hopefully yeah. he might even show he's that player that you want that he'll contribute somehow, whether it's defense or the hustle or something like that. Josh Hart's not a very good shooter. Derek yeah. White, I tell you, Derek White, Derek White his, his is, game, is a good his Derek game White's not a good shooter. Into a good shooter his game good. has progressed tremendously since his sport. I'm, I mean, I can't believe I can't believe how Derek White is today. Like he, he really showed me Derek who he White is. Like oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, two different people. It's, it's unbelievable. Look, and look, I'm a big fan of the, the, the Jonte Murray, and I know a lot of people have said before that Jonte Murray was better than Derek White from the from the Spurs tree. Man, Derek uh, White had me believing he, that he was, was better. Than, he he had me believing that he was better than Derek, than jo, Jonte Murray right now. Jonte was I mean, a bad dude it, in the Spurs. I don't I, know what, what that saying. Hawks. I don't know what that that's Hawks what thing saying. was. I don't care what he did with the Hawks. I'm I just. Know. But yeah, yeah. Well, that was just a bad fit. Turns yeah, out that was all it, 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 the fit. That's what I'm thinking too. You got to remember, you know, Dejounte I, I, was on some bad Spurs teams. He was on the bad. Spurs. Yeah, so he, he was. He was, he, was. Out more. He, he was young. He was on the bad Spurs teams. You know, this was the post, the post big three, the post Kawhi. You know, he was there yeah. for a year. I think, but it was the post all those. He was a you know, beast a though, defensively, the then offensively, yeah, for, for sure. Oh yeah, but remember? I mean, look, Dejounte was getting triple doubles. DeJounte, he was you but, yeah, numbers. but DeJounte, yeah. but you know why I like DeJounte is because the offensive skill was there. The defense was awful, but he went to the Spurs, an organization like that. They don't give a damn how good offensively you are. What can yeah. you do on the other side of the court? And he, That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Where he transformed himself, Rick contested this. He transformed into a two. He was the Spurs best player for a season or two. Yeah. yeah. Unquestioned. Yep. What well, didn't mean yep. much because, right? But yeah, match. That's why I say, what if they had Victor Wembyama and then DeJounte? When DeJounte fully that's transformed exactly what I said into that two way player, that's exactly player. what I said. Boy, the Spurs, man, you kidding me? You you know what's funny? I'm happy you brought it up, Colin, and I, I, I'm gonna get right back to James Suggs. Ah, yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking, I was actually thinking, and I said it too. I was kind of hoping that for, I know the trade that happened and everything, all the picks that the Spurs got from the Hawks. I was kind of hoping, I, and I've thought about it so much. And I saw some other people say it too. I'm like, wow, I thought about this, and I'm seeing some other people saying it. If the John Timmery was back on the Spurs right now with Victor Wimbledon, y'all. I mean, just imagine how it would be. I it feel like they how old is the how old is Murray? He, he's probably like probably mid 20, to like, 29. He, 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 he's getting into the late, he's like around the later, later 20s. So, later 20s. so this yeah. is my thing. The John go to the Spurs. Oh, do now I'm gonna ask you guys this. Do you guys think the Spurs are going to the playoffs this year? No. Not even as a play. I don't know. Going I, I, in I, I don't know if I don't know if they, this is the year yet for them. I, okay. I, I think they'll make progress. I'm okay. hoping they, they, they make progress. It'll be nice to see them back in there. I just don't know if it's the year they probably get back in though. I want to see I how long yet. Chris Paul stays I don't know yet. for the season. I want to see that's going to determine the make or break for me. Is you're Chris Paul staying there? We're getting, off, getting off topic a little bit, bro. We are getting off topic, but we're going to bring it back. I'm gonna bring yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, want Look, Ricky, we, I want Ricky to finish his point with Suggs because yeah, we're going to get back. We're going to get back. We're going to get back. And that's what I'm saying. I moderate too. I got it. No, but you see, you see, we can't wait to get into these type of Right. No, we no, I know. It's I mean, a lot. Gotta, it's a lot. I'm still on it. No, listen, listen. I know, I'm and I was trying driving. to get too off topic. I'm driving. You were safe here. Yeah, I, I, I ain't want to get too off the rails. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying some, yeah. some stuff I wanted to reply to. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm you, like, you, you want to reply to? No, no, that, that. We gonna get to you. We gonna put the spotlight on you. I'm driving. Go ahead, Rick. You know how it is when you say one thing and then it starts to just randomly become like a broader conversation. That's what it kind of comes to. Yeah. But, that's no, but one get... thing I'm gonna yeah, but, but I'm gonna just say this much. Go ahead. I don't think Dejounte would kind of be all that. Granted, Victor's a generational right, but the Spurs aren't in the timeline of where he's at age mentally and where he would want to be in his career. Because so that's why I think he probably wouldn't want to go back to the Spurs. But back to the Jalen Suggs, of course, yeah. bring it back on time. And, you know, I, I say look out for potential. You know, it's always good when you see players working their game, and that's why I mentioned like a Derek White. Look at his shooting now. Josh right. Hart, we know he's not a great shooter, but obviously mm. there's more there's more to, to what the game of what you could bring, your IQ, um, your hustling plays, defense. And we all know rebounding is a big part of defense, too. And we see how Josh Hart plays. So, you know, Jalen Suggs is a very young player. He could always develop that that offensive game. You know, he'll bring the defense, probably add a little bit more to his bag. And, you know, maybe that offense will come as a time. But I think this contract – I don't hate the contract, but I think the contract to, to give you a – 
really the potential and, and what he could possibly be as a player for now in the next couple of years as an Orlando Magic player. I like that. I, I definitely agree with a lot what both you said. But, Ricky, you, you took the – to me, you hit it home comparing him to uh, Derek White and Josh Hart because – Derek White, Derek White this White's season was like the hot button player. Yeah. Everybody he said it, yeah, yeah. Around trade deadline, around free agency, everybody's like, I got to get a Derek <laughs> White type of player. We got to get a Derek White type of player. And Jalen Suggs, he has that type of – he's about 6'4", 6'5". He could finish. He shot about 38% right. from three. Just pay. All his percentages came up. So I definitely oh, see where you're going with that. But Colin, the, the question he was raising was what's the – pretty much what's the ceiling of his offense or how, how high we can expect it to be. Oh, uh, and I, definitely, I definitely agree with looking at it as, as far as that. But my thing is, I don't think we've really seen Jalen Suggs pop offensively because of a few reasons. One, Paulo Bancaro. He, yeah. He's an ISO hey. bucket. He's, a, he's, a, he's elite in the ISO. He likes to get the ball in that pinch post area or facing up at the top of the key and go to work. You got to let him get the ball and do that because he's your best player. He's going to get you 25, 26 a night. That's one. Franz Wagner, and um, he got a lot of – like in the playoffs, he he fell off in the playoffs a little bit. No, but, he did just fall off a little bit. He yeah, he, he fell, he fell off. off a lot. It reminded me of that Michigan fall off in the in – Yeah, the, I'm glad you said I that. Like, I, I swore I was watching it. I'm like, yep, yeah, this is a repeat. He's yeah. doing it again. But in the regular season, I'll give him his props. He grew no, a little bit. He, started, he, he was handling the ball a little bit more. He was getting more comfortable looking for his shot. That takes the ball out of Suggs' hand a little bit more. Then on top of that, he was playing in like a three-guard platoon system with Cole Anthony and Markel Folks. So there's a lot of time those guys were on the in, on the floor in pairs together. And you, like I said, you got Paolo, you got Franz, and you, you got Wendell Carter down there. We got to get the ball sometime. I mean, it's it wasn't really I want to say it wasn't really his role to go out there and look for his bucket unless he needed to which I think translated to his higher percentages this year. So I say that with saying is I don't think him going out and getting 20 points a game is necessarily what the Magic are looking for from him with this contract, him being that, that top scorer. If he does, if he ends up being that. Well, I mean, up- it, it, it's really more so the viewpoint because everything you're saying is spot on because you don't need him to do that. But right. when he came into the league, before he got the additions, granted, who would have? But it never popped off, and even after when it when he had that, yes, he had somewhat of a control because Jalen Suggs' his first two years looked like he was going to be the point guard of the future. No, he and was then, not, bro. No, no, he wasn't. Cole Anthony was not looking like this. Who was going to say Markel? Markel only played for what a season or two, and he, he played well in the regular season. But they drafted Jalen Suggs n- number five. Because they want to hunt. That was the look at that time they drafted him. He looked at, at the, the magic guard. Did. At the time they but drafted that was him, the, looked at him that way. Yeah, but I thought you were saying after his first two, like during his first two seasons, because his well, first two seasons were bad. They, he played like yeah, 40 he, he was he was bad because he was hurt. That's a part too. But but he, yeah, he he wasn't he wasn't that he didn't play that well. That's why yeah, like straight up. But this season was a was a was a huge step up for him, which is why I, I think the Magic see him as qualified because he was in a. They see him as a player that can be molded into something perfect for their team and their system, which was Rick, what Rick alluded to as far as the the Derek White and the, and the Josh Hart's. I keep I hate to keep bringing their names up, but it's the perfect it's it's the perfect match. Where but the only difference is Jalen Suggs is going to be looked at to handle the ball more because he's a point guard. So I yeah. think the other thing mm-hmm. you look at is how comfortable is he leading the offense and, and orchestrating the offense. If that's something, if you're looking for him to improve somewhere else, maybe that's the part to look to. Feel me? Because you got other guys coming off the bench and other younger guys that are going to that are coming up and being being groomed too, like Tristan De Silva, Jet Howard. That's going to have to get more minutes. Um, I don't. I think uh, he, he threw Jet Howard in there. Come on, buddy. I'm gonna let you. Well, I'm saying. Out, Bro, you might, not, you might not like him. You might not think much I'm of let, him. Like, I'm going to let you know, let, I'm, thinking. I'm gonna let you rock out, bro. Yeah, I'm saying. But, yeah, that, I'm just saying that that ties into my whole point is I don't think they need him to be that big-time scorer that we kind of were expecting him to be. Or not even – I shouldn't even just say score, but offensive threat as a mm-hmm. whole where he's, he's going to be like more of like a utility guy. And that's what the Magic need. Maybe so, that's his. That's uh, Jalen Suggs. Yeah. Maybe he's I the think, guy. Yeah. And, and like you say, you know, 
but look at look at the big just look at the bigger. I think the Magic probably got the bigger picture too. Like, would you say you just pay a player one hundred fifty million dollars just to play defense, or you wouldn't do that unless you knew that there right. would be some improvement in this game? That's that, why I said obviously you can mold they... that player. That's why I was getting what Kyrie was getting at too. That and I agree with him. Like, right. you know, and that's where I come with the potential. Like, the, obviously the defense is there, but you don't. And like I'm saying, you don't. I don't think you just pay 150 million dollars just for defense. Well, I'm I sure mean, they would work with him his game. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Because, I mean, you see some who, type of who wants mm-hmm. to pay for Andre Roberson? I know firsthand Andre Roberson. I don't there care. You what there you go. Yeah. I love Andre Roberson, but boy, was he a liability on the offensive end. Like terrible, it was, terrible, it was yeah, detri- exactly. he was he was detrimental. You know, no, no, no disrespect, of course. But no yeah, disrespect. It was bad. But no, I no disrespect, hurt, of course. But it's the it truth, was, though, because he got hurt. It's true. Because he got hurt, he, he, he never he never got a spot back yeah. in the league. It was four on five, literally on the court. He, yeah, he, he saw he, how he, to, yeah. I think he got picked up by the Nets on like a ten day, and that was it. That, that was over. That was it. Yeah. But, that was like two years ago, three years ago. That was it. So I want to segue from Jalen Suggs to another Jalen because we talking about a guy that got one hundred and fifty mil, and the Rockets got to handle this correctly. That's all I'm gonna say. Some may say that was an overpay. No, but, I would give Sagoon that. He's the real superstar nope. out of the door. Yes, he is. Well, he you, didn't sure even let is. Me get, you didn't even let me get into what I was about to talk about. Oh, bro. I thought you <laughs> said. Oh, I thought you said no. No, bro. I'm get. I was. I'm, you didn't even let me segue correctly, bro. You messed me up. I'm okay. saying. I'm gonna just go, bro. Jalen, Jalen Green, 108 mil. That's you got, uh, three years, correct? Is that is that what three it was? Years, three years, three years, 108 yeah. mil. Yes. What do y'all think about that contract? Do you think that was because remember it was a big thing with the Rockets where it was they weren't even sure. A lot of people weren't even sure if they were going to extend Jalen Green and Single. You, but you, you see Green get extended with only the three years, where a lot of guys just get extended it with five. What do you guys think about that? I, I'll tell you real quick. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you, you want to go ahead? You, you want to no, go ahead, okay. bro. Um, I have I'm actually happy we talk about uh, Jalen Green and, and getting into the Rockets a little bit actually because. First of all, it's a great young team, in my opinion, up and coming team. Uh, Jalen Green, though, I'll say this: you you guys remember this past season when there was the whole Mikael Bridges talking that maybe there was a trade looking with him and the Rockets for Jalen yeah. Green, and that the Nets turned it down because yeah. I'm assuming the Nets didn't really think too highly of him. Now, why yeah, is it that did. right after that, all of a sudden Jalen Green start having all these crazy games, getting to the rim, shooting, he dropping twenty points, thirty points. He, I feel like he finished the season off. Of, like, no, I he like it was like, like I don't know if that's what it was that kind of lured him into having such a good season, like start producing a lot. And I don't know if that's what you, how you guys feel too or what you saw, but I'm like, I'm like, man, Jalen Green, I kept seeing him more and more. Like I'm watching how he's playing, his game stepping up. And I'm like, and I thought about it recently too. I actually thought about it. I'm like, him and Sangoon, I'm like, they, they are players who might got to get that contract. And Sangoon, I like real good player down in the pink. And, you know, looking at that contract with Jalen Green, I'm not surprised that he got that deal. I think the Rockets see something now. And based off how he was doing, I think, especially this this season right here, who knows if that Mikael Bridges talk with the trade got, got into him? Who knows? Sometimes it could be outside noise. Who knows if he even heard it or not? But I just feel like when that happened, though, I just kept seeing him a lot and just seeing how his game progressed a little bit. Like I said, he was getting to the rim. He's scoring a lot, 20, 30 points, dropping numbers. And – I just say I'm not surprised that the Rockets gave him that contract because I think it's another one of them deals where they probably looking at him for maybe a, a big impact season here. And I know this rock, this young Rockets team is loaded with some talent, but maybe the Rockets and, and he may Edoka could look at him as having a big season. No, uh, I'm just no, saying they got the Rockets got to make the playoffs this year. Yeah, I, no excuse. Can, can, can That's I what I think. I think the same thing too. Yeah, they got to make the playoffs this year. No excuse. Yeah, Go ahead, Kyrie. I wanted, before I, I, wanted say, I wanted to say something as far as. Uh, Rick alluded to Jalen uh, Green's like his strong end to the season. Like I see, Sengun was hurt, wasn't he? Wasn't he Sengun, hurt? I was going to yeah. tell you, Sengun, 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 Sengun got hurt. He yeah, got hurt. And, yes, he and honestly, to me, when in a lot of contexts, like March basketball, don't mean much to me because that's a time when a lot of guys are sitting out, and we see a lot of guys on two way mm-hmm. contracts mm-hmm. and G League guys come in and play mm-hmm. and really get their stuff. Okay, so. Okay. I think a lot of that was Jalen Green being able to hide defensively because a lot of that talent on the wing wasn't out there as much. And having the Green like to score because Sengun was out and he wasn't really there to orchestrate the that's offense. True. They couldn't really run it through him. So, so, you, think he is, so you think he's a facade. Okay, okay, okay. I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessary. I, I hear that. Because I think Jalen Green is tough. Okay. But the thing is, yeah. 
tries to get things done on his own time a lot of the times and not in the flow of the offense, which is why I think he kind of excelled when Sungun was out because he was, it was more so like, hey, it, it could be my time now. And I think I you got guys that. like Fred Van Vliet who plays team basketball. Um, mm-hmm. Dylan Brooks, who isn't much of a go-to scorer, but can hit the knockdown three and play team basketball, play, be a glue guy. And you got Sengun, of course, who can who, whose contract we'll talk about uh, right after this. But he's a guy that can rebound it. He can push and dribble the ball at seven, at six, ten, six, eleven. Can pass the mm-hmm. ball in the half court. You gotta, you gotta be willing to play within the system and be able to play within the offense and let the ball come to you and let your opportunities come to you. I think a lot of times, which kind of, I want to say, alienated Jalen Green. Not so much as far as like a locker room thing, but as far as his play style with the rest of the guys, he had to have that one-on-one play a lot of the time to really get himself going because he's he's got to get he's got to see the ball go in to get himself going. He so, didn't play defense either. So he, he, but he started he, playing defense to the end. Adoka you know, made him play defense. And he misses a lot of he misses a lot of reads like passing wise too. And, and it gets frustrating sometimes to watch because he'll have a guy wide open. And he'll pull he'll just want to pull the ball back out and kind of like just, a lot of it is basketball IQ. They're not talking about with the G League at night. I said, "Yo, there." Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I noticed that. I'll, I'll I'll end off with this before I swing it to you, Colin. I think the contract is fine though, because I could definitely see Jalen Green growing as a player outside of his yeah, offense. Yeah. Everybody know his offense is there. Yeah, and, no. And when you got a coach like Ime Udoka, who you see, he turned that team around like that. Had them focus in defensively. And it helps having more mature guys like Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks in the locker room. But he turned that team around. He turned that team around fast, and I think he's able to get guys to buy in. Udoka is a te- – I always said this. Udoka should have been the one holding that Larry O'Brien, uh, O'Brien trophy. Not, not, that's no discredit to Joe. For sure. no, dis- no discredit to him. Mm-hmm. I, but, but he set it, the foundation for that team. Right. I it say- reminded me of Mark Jackson and Steve Kerr all over again. Yep. Two different I've, reasons, though. Two complete different reasons. But it was like, damn. It's like the guy that set the culture and foundation, blossomed the talents, and then this guy comes in, and, and you know, it's like, hey, he was an assistant coach, so it's not like that's – I guess that's the difference to a certain extent. But, yeah. hey. I say, I say this, too. I wanted, I actually wanted the email to take over for the Nets as the head coach when he was an assistant. The Nets? I say that too. Yeah, I, yeah, he was an assistant mm. coach on the Nets. I had wanted him to take over. And, and Around what time? Yeah, what time uh, he on the Nets? I think this was right before he went to Boston. So it was so, like right after Steve Nash got fired or whatnot. Yeah, I believe it was. I believe it was around that time. Yeah, I think. I think from the Nets, he went to the Celtics. Was that the joined. year KD? Ky- or that was the year after the year KD? I think it was Ky- the year. Uh, or that was KD, the year KD, they KD all and left. Kyrie was on the Nets when he was a, a head coach of the Celtics. I think he had uh, just left. But yeah, gotcha. it was around that time. Yeah, KD and Kyrie was on the Nets though when he was on the Celtics as, as uh, on the staff. I think I, hmm. I remember just when he got the head coaching role too. Hey, mm-hmm. I believe that's around the time he got the head coaching role. But I did. I thought because remember uh, Yudoka, he's been he's been on some teams as, as an assistant coach. I believe he came from the Spurs also. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys remember. He, I, I believe I he's on the. That. I believe he was on the Sixers also. I believe I believe yeah, I'm on the Sixers. I believe, yeah. so, I just, the I'm, Brooklyn Nets is so forgettable to me because they had one of the most horrible yeah. big threes that's ever existed in the eyes with you. Most, most, most unfortunate or, or most, the most, most unfortunate, unfortunate or unlucky. The most team. unfortunate, yeah. yeah. The most unfortunate. Yeah. Or, yeah. or unlucky big three we've seen. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. I'm still the band between them and the Clippers because woof. Uh, that they had to I, go, look, they might know, be up for top five top the, ten worst trades in though. NBA history. You got the Kings yes, too, their draft history getting cheated in the finals. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, the, uh, yeah. the conference finals. Yeah. yeah. Yo, Con, I'm actually have you you brought it up, Con. I wanted that matchup in the finals a few years ago, the Nets and the Clippers. About four years ago. I thought what? that could have been a potential. Yeah, I wanted to see that. I thought uh, everybody, I thought, I thought, everybody I thought, thought it was gonna be that. I thought I thought that could have happened. Yo, but, but injuries, injuries messed. I injuries just felt and, 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 like, and getting trying to get their part of it kind of guy. I just but. felt like the Brooklyn Nets. First of all, for me, another part. I never said this in the pod because I felt like everyone would just go crazy thinking, "Oh, that's not the reason why." I remember an interview, and I don't know if it was what interview it was. I still remember vividly Kyrie when he was talking about the coach. He said, oh, no, we don't need a coach. We got a coach. I was coach, like, yeah. yo, I remember hearing that. 
And I'm like, yo, that's that's not the mindset at all, especially mm-hmm. my point guard. And then it was just like three ball holistic go- guys like Katie, Kyrie. Now, who's to say so Colin, three great Colin, guys gotta- couldn't put it together to make it work? I'm not saying they couldn't make it work. To me, it's just I just never saw that panning out to me. Because I, you, I just did. You got to also take into effect the way James Harden forced himself there too. That I think that kind of threw a like a, like a wrench in a lot of things too. Because one, he was out of shape. He had to play himself into shape, and he kept getting hurt because of that. He had the hamstring problem, and then Ky- and then Kyrie with the COVID stuff. Like it was. I it think was, I think part yeah. of that too is what sent him out out to uh, the Nets is the Kyrie situation, maybe too. Yeah. But maybe he saw the coaching situation, but. I'll say this though, I ain't, I ain't cut nobody off. Um, Harden, yeah, I'll tell you, when he got to the Nets, he, he was playing good. But um, obviously, the hamstring, that, that, that hamstring injury at the beginning of that series against the Bucks, that, mm-hmm. that, that was part of the start of everything turning down. And then Kyrie, uh, Kyrie got hurt. Look, I'll tell you this the, the Nets were Katie's, Katie's shoe size difference of making <laughs> it to, to winning the championship because he was single handedly trying to carry them. You know, in that game, no, uh, was Kate, it? game listen, that, that last game, that last Brooke, game, he was trying that his best. Nets, that Brooklyn Nets trio, I don't think no one like KD. If, he did if, his best, man. If he if KD won that game for the Nets, Kyrie was coming back against Atlanta. I believe it. I believe it was Atlanta was going to play. KD, Kyrie was going to come back, but it was just you know a oh, lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. It was it's a bad just, tenure for the Nets. It was a bad few years. I don't know, um, Rick. I just don't like. I just up. don't like those three together. I just feel like if I had I big threes, I, I just don't. Those three together just but never. Look, think, think about what they like. Did. I don't see like I don't see this feeling as championship. No, I hear you. Like I just but, wouldn't be able to see that. And look, it's one of them things where because of the small sample size, we can't really say too much about it because right. they only and played about part. sixteen games. Exactly. And you know, we saw them play together. Obviously, when they played the Celtics. When, when they play, I think it was the Celtics series. They played together and they looked good, but just injuries really will be the big topic about how failure of that that team really was with the whole big three. Obviously, the Kyrie situation. They had the head coach still. I, I said Steve Nash, as great as a point guard that he was and everything. Um, I ain't gonna lie. He reminds me of when Jason Garrett was on the Cowboys. I'm, I'm, but, I, I'll but say you know that. what? Like, like it, 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 you know, and, and look, dude, you're talking about watching a lot Nash, of games. Though. I watch it. Steve, Nash should have got that position to begin with. He never he been should, a coach. No, and, and look, look, right, I, like, look, I watch a lot of games. He shouldn't have got that position. That's not fair he to him. I hate that for him because that's his first. And, and then to throw a coach, granted, but man, this you don't throw. But a look, guy. yeah, I'll say this, and this is one thing I always think about when I watch. You know, a lot of players that we grew up watching. How, how often is it that you see a lot, especially when it comes to point guards? Think about a lot of the top point guards, you know, visionary point guards, ones who could pass and, and, and you know, they could play the, real well at, at point guard position. Think about how when they be, first became head coaches. You got Steve Nash, uh, Derek Fisher, uh, Jason Kidd. You yeah, know, look Fisher. at a lot of these. Look, look at he a lot didn't of these. have a bad coaching coaches. career. I think. I mean, I, think, I mean, maybe and, and overall, but, 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 like, percentage though, might not be you can good. See I can't that think they didn't work. My head. What I'm getting at, though, is you can see that for some reason the trend is like a lot of these point guards that we watched though in the league, for some reason, why is it that they're getting these jobs, but they're really the position they're really working up? Now, I'll say, obviously, Derek Jason Kidd is the head coach now of the Dallas Mavericks, and obviously he went to be an assistant coach with the Lakers. He got the ring, then he just got the head coaching job with the Mavericks. But, you know, you look at that, like, a Steve Nash that we watch play, a Derek Fisher. There might be a couple other names I'm probably missing, or really that players that became head coaches. And you know, sometimes you know, I think the name is what it would get you. Like, oh, I hear oh, Steve Nash is becoming the head coach. Oh, I know how good I Steve mean, Nash was as a player. I know how good Jason Kidd was as a player. Like, well, like, like, I like mean, what would we, what would we say about if Chris Paul? See, you but know how my thing Chris is, is, as much as I love it, head coach? none Ray of John them Ron. had this. But they all players to me. That's why I will always say at the end, like JJ Reddy, he's not. Yeah, JJ Reddy. There we go. I'm, we we got to see what he. Guard. Yeah, I'm so skeptical of him go, yeah. because he's yeah. never coached. That's why I'm. There we just go. Everything about the whole setup to there me was just spotty. Like a coach that's never coached. I don't care what he was as a player. You know, you know, coach and player. Your you mindset know the one, is 
You know what's one of the worst things about watching Steve Nash coach the Nets? Him playing <laughs> him playing three guards from the one to three spots in the in the five lineup. You got so, the point guard, shooting guard, and small phone. He's so you remember guards. that. All right, you remember. I, I, I watch right. every. I watch every. I watch a lot of basketball, and I, yeah. I, I, I as a Nets fan also. I watch. A I lot just, of basketball. I'm glad you remember that. Watch a lot of basketball. Just, yeah. Oh, believe me. Yeah. I watch. Right. Believe me. I can't forget I, it. Yeah. I can't forget it. I I'm cannot glad forget Kyrie's it. not a Brooklyn fan. I don't know why. How come you ain't become like a Brooklyn fan, Kyrie? I thought you would just embrace Brooklyn too, since you New York at, at this point. You're not gonna embrace him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I like. It's obviously no, obviously the New, you know the Knicks run New York and everything like that. Oh, I, y'all it, talk it, 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 it's no, 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 no. You know, and look, and look, that, that, no, that's the obvious known and how it is. Like, all right, all right, you know, don't let the Brooklyn fans come in here talking crazy. No, 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 no. All right, all right. I know. All seven Brooklyn fans, bro. Really? All seven now, look, Brooklyn fans. Look, right. any Brooklyn right. Nets fans who watch this, please okay. feel free to comment. Please. Hey, I'm out. Please feel free to comment. I, I'm. Hey. All seven of y'all. It's gonna look, look, look. Every Brooklyn Nets fan right now is waiting for the 2025 draft so they can probably get Cooper Flag probably right now. That's probably Bro, what they won't even get that right. Like I said, they should have never loved Jersey. That was the, that's when they first. That's yeah, when they I hate uh, that man. New Jersey Nets sound better. I don't care. I don't care. Yo, I'm speaking about that. Yo, are the Sixers moving to Jersey or not? No, no, no. no, no. They, they got that settled. They got they, that settled. They, 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 it's taken care of, right? Yeah. I mean, I I'm gonna seeing, be real with you. I keep who, seeing these pictures. Who well, yeah. I don't think no Philadelphia in all honesty, unless it's you just be, genuinely yeah, I mean, don't care. I think like, it's cool. Yeah. Stay in Philly. You stay in the city. Stay in Philadelphia. Stay in Philly, don't go bro. to no. That that don't be go outrageous. No. no, don't don't do that. Philadelphia Sixers, but we're playing in a whole different state. Come on, guys. Yeah, there you go. Like, what are we doing? All right, listen to me, man. Kyrie, it's time about that time to make some predictions, man. I'm looking forward to it, Kyrie. Are you looking forward to it? Because I'm excited to hear Rick's predictions. I'm excited to hear your predictions too, Kyrie. And I think Rick's going to surprise me with some shit. I got a feeling. Kyrie, I'm going to start it off with you, man. We're going to start with the big one. The, the head honcho. The head honcho awards of honcho awards. Outside of Coach of the Year. Excuse me. But put it inside that. MVP, man. Who? And it better not be from the Knicks. Because no one's going to get it. I'm just gonna crush y'all little <laughs> delusions and hopes now. Don't even talk about what is. Look, don't want to hear it. Look, but Rick, with that, that being said, none of his players can even qualify them. They can't even play this. That is true. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that is true. Now none of your players that is qualify. Oh yeah. Okay. Yo, yo. All right, bro, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean we, we see Paul. Paul George already <laughs> got hurt already. Paul yeah. George already hurt. Oh, wow. It's the right. twitching as it is, bro. Already, I love bro. it. I can oh, they're talk, I love they're it. talking about the whole back-to-back situation and yeah. everything. The big, wait, what's, what's the nickname for Cat? The Big Bodega? That's the that's what y'all calling him now? The bro, Big Bodega? He, he, okay. The Big Bodega would be eligible. <laughs> he, he'd at least be eligible, feel me? He'd at least be yeah. eligible. <laughs> and B going uh, to give you 40 games of MVP. Hey. And then the rest of the season ahead. And you already, hey. and, I, and I don't even know why you're starting this because he shouldn't have even got one two Yo. years ago, and we know it. Hey, he, stop that! He should have won. I don't he care. Rudy no, he did. He cried. No, he did. No, he did. He cried. He should have. He should have won it, and he deserved bro. it. He cried for MVP. He cried. I listen. All right, yeah, Knicks fans, like, 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 like Toronto with Kawhi hit the shot. <laughs> oh man! Like I, I ain't gonna lie. That's hey, one of my favorite moments. That's one cried. of my favorite moments. We yo. all cried, I'm, I'm happy, bro. I don't want to hear that. Not that not, 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 not the booger nose like that, bro. No. We all cried, bro. Like we all. I cried tears. Like I couldn't old. believe Kawhi hit that shot. It didn't look like it was going. I cried too. He had the right to cry. The whole care. city of Philly cried, and it felt good. Bro. Yo, yeah. Kyle, yo. Yo, Kawhi had kids crying. It was, he I, had everyone yo, crying when he hit that shot. Yeah, he, he had everyone kid, crying when he, he hit that yeah. Kids crying. He had bro. everyone crying. He hit That's that why. Shot. And, and, and you know what's crazy, Colin? And you want to know what's funny about that? What? Y'all have only made it to the same exact spot in the playoffs. That's happened in the second round. Y'all, y'all never uh, made it past that. that you know that, something, like, Rick? That is true. That is you true. know something, Rick? That is true. But I'll be wrong true. if I start looking up y'all history, and start doing some research. I'd be wrong in that point, right? Oh, I agree. You know what? I but, embrace it. You know what? With that I, I, being said, I, I, I'll tell you our history. I've told our history. <laughs> I, I've that, lived it. Listen, I've lived it. I, 
Hey, listen. Hey, right. Y'all right. think y'all think because y'all went through Sam Hankey and in the process, <laughs> y'all y'all been through something. Y'all, y'all ain't been through nothing, bro. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Of being the Sixers ain't been through nothing, bro. Y'all listen, drafted man. Evan Turner second overall over Demarcus Cousins. That was y'all fault. Like, hey, like, <laughs> come on, bro. Hey, the Knicks had some pretty damn poor choices. Now let's again, do that. I, some again, of our draft selections were reasonable. Some of y'all's is unexplainable. Don't do that. <laughs> I think I think it's fair to say both teams have had some bad drafts. Yeah, like, like we just. I right, think wait, it's fair right, to say. Let's, let's, I think that's the one thing we could agree on. But I'm doing damage control because I got the ability to do some damage control. He can't. But with that being said, let's talk about MVP. Look, MVP I'm predictions. Getting MVP, I'm getting my MVP straight, <laughs> Kyrie, who is the MVP? Who would be your runner up? The carries. Go ahead. My MVP, my runner up is the two same people I had the previous two years. Uh my MVP going to be Luka Doncic. He's let me down know. three times. No, He's let me down know. three times, but this is the year. Fourth time's a charm. Luka Doncic is getting MVP this season. Shay should have won last year. So I'm going with Shay. Shay's my MVP. That's and cool. he's got the best chance to win it. Let's be realistic. If it plays out how it should play out. If you know, you know. Who's your runner-up, Kyrie? I mean, I mean, that makes sense because the, the Thunder, he's going to have to pull in a lot of work because the Thunder are missing Hartenstein for the, until, like, December. Yeah, but that's even more. But that yeah, really I was helps say, his case. Uh, that helps his case even more, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. He's going to have to put in a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. But with Doncic, the reason I got him winning is because he should have he, he, he won he, one. He, he, he should have he won it every year. I mean, let's keep it a bean, bro. His team. Last team, year. Like he, Last the year was debatable. He up, the number he puts up, the way he wills his teams and the wins with other guys yeah. go ghost. Yeah, that like, bothered me that Luka didn't win last year. I was fine with either Shea or Luka. I didn't care between those two. I didn't expect Yogi. Like, yeah, he was in the race, but I just didn't. I didn't like that that he won. I don't know. But my backup's going to be – uh, I'm actually going to – my backup will be Shea. I was going to go Anthony Edwards, but I like Shea's case better. I don't see it. I don't know. No, I don't want to say that. I want to see. We talked about this, Rick. I gotta see. Let's let's bring this back up after thirty games, 30, 40 games. Because I you think Ed Edwards, Ed Edwards might make that case. But Rick, go ahead. So I'm saying same thing with Kyrie and um, I, I got Luke. I got Luca uh, Luca Doncic uh, with the MVP. Um, I got Shay. Shay is is very close for me. But I'm gonna go Luke on it because I've been hounding Luke since about 2019, 20, 20-ish. I've been hounding him. Like I feel like from that point every year he was gonna be like at the top of the list of getting it, and he hasn't gotten it. So that's why I'm gonna finally right. go with Luke. Uh Shay been on my radar for the past two years, not this previous year, but the one before. So I'm not surprised that he was actually everyone saw how good that he was this past season. And I'm you know, I know hey. he was what I believe number two. So um I really I thought he really could have got it last year too. He was that good. Uh, we saw where the Thunder were at, um, but I, and I obviously I don't want to say uh, Joker. I don't want to say Joker going to get a fourth one. I think that's too. Obviously, it'd be good for someone else I to win it. I mean, um, I don't even think I don't want to say it last year. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, and I think you know I, I know I know that was a heavy conversation with a lot of people about if Joker should have got it last year. Luther I, I, did, I did I did think about Ann Edwards too, but I was like, no. I don't know what the no. whole Timbo I got to see it, no. and the other one. Obviously, Luca's my pick though, and the other one that was kind of surface for me was a little bit. It was Giannis. I kind of want to see him have a dominant season too. I was like, I don't know yet, but I understand. I'm gonna go with Luca. I understand the hate for Giannis. I really do. do. How? But it 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 doesn't. Me personally, I wouldn't. I I I don't care about. I think his play style. You dominate. You dominate. I don't care how you. I, I look, but I, I can high. understand why people hate no, I can understand look, 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 because, because they call him the, the one and dunk man. Exactly. Like, the one I and under, dunk. Like, because I they, they, they feel like that's it. what he does. Well, listen, I'll say, I'll say listen, if listen. someone is good, if someone is good at what they're doing and they I that's what I'm saying. If, yeah. if someone is good at what they're doing and they effective at it and you can't exactly. stop them. But, why? but this is the other thing you know too. I mean? People saw footage of Giannis, pre-draft footage of Giannis back in 2013, bro, and see what he was what he was then. Oh yeah. And what and he's they doing now, that is pure, that is pure work. Exactly. Pure I'm happy work. you brought that up. That's pure work. You determination. That. You can't exactly. hate Giannis. 
Uh, well, no, and- but no, that but it's like I from I just think like I said, people view the games from all different type of lens. Me personally, I can understand I'm- why. It's like I, all I, you I, do I, is call, I call that, that I call that like I call that, that that Instagram talking, that social media talking stuff, bro. That stuff don't mean nothing to me because a lot of people really don't. It's like, some analysis that uh, that be they describe his. It's game a lot of nephew music. takes. It's a lot of nephew takes. Like it's a lot of kid, like kids, like 15, 16, 17 that got a phone, and because they got a phone, they got a voice, and because they got a voice, they get to say Giannis is not that good because he can't hit a step back three. Like, hey man. Like it's bro, it's crazy. Like they don't really, they don't put in perspective the work one, the work he put in to even get the most approved player of the year before he even got his first MVP. There you go. And bro, it's just, it's a lot of stuff. No, like, I get you, it. I listen. I, it, I don't, it, I don't, it's some, it's, he, it's and, some and, narratives on certain thing, though, guys. It's crazy. This the thing, though, like Giannis, he not it could because one, he was in my MVP. Like he was in mine when I'm thinking of MVPs too, and then Rook brought him up. And I'm like, okay, okay, at least I'm not the only one. Cool. But the other thing is, a lot of people try to discredit Giannis, bro. And I'm not with the Giannis hate whatsoever, dog. Yeah, because, I've always said like that. Y'all said, y'all get, he dom- the way he dominates, nobody can stop it. No and nope. you, you see teams nope. building whole walls and, and building, like, you got a defensive scheme. They're trying, to, they, yeah. they're, trying to, they're trying to do that, the Miami-Toronto wall type. Yeah, that's the way people are trying to try to stop him and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you got to create a wall for a player like that, right. you know, that's, you know that's, right. something, that's okay. telling something. Like, they that, must, they that must they're players. No, but listen, Kyrie, yeah. I hear what you say. Like, the 15, it's some analysis on, like, platforms. I've seen them. They, they try to say his games is too simple. Just real simple. But it's like simple is not a bad thing. Simple is that you get the job done. But I get it. That's the same way how James Harden. Like, people hate his foul baiting. Part of the game, he understood the rule. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, same thing. For, look, same thing. Yo. Said for, uh, Joel and B. But a yeah, people, a lot Joel, of people hate that with Joel. Me, Joel Harden like started that. that said, Harden took that trend and ran with it though. When 2013, yeah. 2014, he was dropping yeah. into guys and just getting like, for he sure. Yeah, that, with the little hint. Yeah, exactly. He I feel like the one that. thing what people look at Joel and B. And, and look, any if any Sixers fan looks at this or anything. Believe me, um, we understand Joel Embiid how good he is of a player. We understand the little sixty-five game rule and Talent, everything. I'm, I, I'm not discred- I'm not discrediting no, no disrespect to uh, Joel Embiid because obviously we know how dominant of a player he is. Also, so I'll say that also. Um, but really, I'm, I've Giannis is in my list, and, and if I had a preference of the two, I would like to see win it. It's obviously Luke or uh, Giannis. But mm-hmm. Shea, I know Shea is up there, man. The league he deserves. I think Ann is up and coming. We'll see if he gets to that. Get to it. Yeah, um, I want to like 30. We'll see if games, he gets y'all. to it. 30, 40 we'll see. Games, y'all. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, see. yeah. I want to see how the how definitely want to see how the Tim Wolves look. Yeah, I, I want to see how. Yeah, I want to see, see that, that Randall so bad. I want to see how Randall yeah. is a mess. I want to yeah. see so bad. All right, go ahead, yeah. Rick. You gave your run uh, up and MVP I, prediction. I already did. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I think, we, I think we all, oh, yes, yeah. I went with Luke. I went with Luke and I went with I'm gonna go with SGA for my second. I'm gonna go with second for runner up. All right, that's SGA. MVP, then we got to talk about the young men, young men in the league that just entered the league. And this r- rookie class, granted, y'all, is preseason. Don't put too much stock into it. He's got to look his best the way, uh, you know, it's just the fact that these there was no Zion or AD or John Wall. Or, there was no, and then, you know, in this draft class coming up, Kyrie, you got five to six guys. They're looking at legitimate franchise players. This draft just didn't have any of that. So that's why it got looked down on. But I think you this is a class of role player building foundations for those championship teams. I think this is the draft, and people aren't really looking at it like that as they should. Because mm-hmm. these rookies aren't playing as bad as people are or people trying, you know. But it's preseason, though. But I'm going to let you start, Kyrie. Who do you have for your rookie of the year and your runner-up? My, my pick? This so draft I, class is so good. I mean, not I so good. It's so confusing in terms of where the grade is, so I'm really intrigued with what you guys are going to say. And, and I feel like a lot of the picks are long shots. but for real, I know. All I, of, yo, but I'm I looking for it. I think mine is a little bit an extra one. I think my, my first one is going to be Matas Buzelis from the Bulls. You think he is? And mm, okay. The reason I'm going to go with Matas is because, one, I think he's going to – he's got that type of game and he's got that frame where he's going to improve week by week, it seems like. 
because I think he's gonna be he's gonna be putting on strength and muscle throughout the season to help improve that jump shot. But that's the that's the other thing as far as skill set. That jump shot is gonna be a lot more pure. And he's gonna have a lot more power behind it. So I think with that, it's gonna expand his offensive game because we've seen it already. He likes to he likes to get out of perimeter, pump fake, and drive to the basket. Use that left to finish at the rim. And with the team like the Bulls, with so many young guys and so many guys that can play multiple positions and whatnot. I think he'll end up finding his way in there because there's a lot of guys that I'm personally not super high on or I don't see having, a, like, big seasons. Like, for example, Patrick Williams, who they just signed to an extension. Um, I just don't see what Pat – like, like what they were selling us on Pat coming out of Florida State, I saw, like, that Kawhi Leonard light. But, like, he just has a showing that he doesn't really have no, that sense it, of urgency when it, he plays. Pat, and, yeah. And then another another guy, Josh Giddy. I really like Josh Giddy, but I think Josh Giddy's gonna be good still. The, the lack of spacing that team's gonna have because it's a lot of question marks, like as far as shooting with that team. We don't know what's going on with Zach Levine when if he's gonna be traded throughout the season because he's not he's not with the timeline anymore. Demar Derozan left. Um, Vucevic, he's gonna do his thing. His 17, 18 points, nine boards. He's gonna do his thing. So I think it's going to be a lot. You got Lonzo Ball coming back too. Who I'm not. I'm. I'm kind of afraid. I'm not. I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of afraid with his comeback and what this, what we're going to see from him. So it's a lot of uncertainty with the Bulls. You still got the uh, Io DeSumo. You, you got a lot of young guys that you got to. We got to see, and I think the Bulls don't really know yet how all these guys play together. So I think because of that, Matas, he gets some extra minutes. He finds his way, kind of like a Gigi Jackson did last year, even though his opportunity came off an injury. He came right. in and he made the best of that. He came in and he did what he, he was asked to score. He was asked to shoot the ball, and that's what he did. I think right. he be asked to do a little bit of everything, a little bit of scoring and the paint, a little bit of defending. And I think he's a guy we'll see grow week by week or month by month. And I honestly can see him winning rookie of the year if he gets the, um, the right spot in the rotation. And on my backup, I'm going to go with Zach Eady because Zach Eady, he's another one of the most clear-cut guys. I mean, you've seen the alley-oops with him and John, him and the, and the, uh, the Grizzlies going on in the preseason, preseason highlights and whatnot. And he's just a guy, he's, he is what he is already. He's going to be a mountain in the paint. He's going to get buckets down there. He's going to block shots and he's going to rebound. And um, I think just based off of that, he's going to be bound to put up a double-double, if not close to it this season. And um. Given the the weak rookie class, I think that'd be that that'd be more than enough to stand out. I'm with it. I'm with it. Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, yeah, go. Great, great picks from Kyrie. I understand everything that he said there too. Um, I feel like for my number one, uh, my number one option, who I think for rookie of the year, I'm going with uh, Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard from the uh, Houston Rockets. I think uh, Reed. Oh man. I love I, Reed. I just don't see he'll he'll get the minutes. I know, I know, and and I get what you're saying, but I, you know, I love watching, Reed. Just just I watching. Him. I love watching him. I know. Tape, I love him. I watching love the him. tape when he I got drafted. Him. I'm like, I'm oh, like, whoa, I know. whoa, this dude he could play. I'm, I'm a like, Kentucky I, fan. I, 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 I let him go. At, Kyle, let him speak. Kyle, we know, bro. Let him speak. I looked at the scoring. I looked at the pass, and I'm like, I like who I like who the Rockets. I'm like, here we go with the Rockets, adding more talent. I'm like, look at this, and then I, I watch his uh, when he played against the Thunder in that pre what was it, the preseason game, I believe, uh, not too long ago. And I'm like, he got the mid range, he got the little pass to the corner. I, I, I'm high on Reed and the minutes. The minutes was my only concern if he gonna get the minutes. But I hope he got it. Um, my second option, though, that's Kyrie said, I got Zachy with the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Zachy definitely gonna be my number two. But I would love to see if Reed could get it. I like what I see from Reed as a player. I used to scream at the TV. Put him in the game. Coach Cal, buddy. I love Coach Cal. I got a love hate relationship with Coach Cal. I really do. <laughs> you know, he don't know me from a can of paint, but I know him. Uh, <laughs> man, with that being said, all right, Ricky of the Year, you guys say, hey, I love the choices. Let's get to six men of the year. Wait, Carl, who's your pick, bro? You didn't give a pick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. You, you know, I forgot mm-hmm. about myself. Uh, who man. you pick? 
You know what? Uh, I, I really was rocking with... You know what? I thought Rob was going to have a shot because I thought it looked like it had a clear backup mm. stage for point guard until they grabbed Dante D'Angelo. So he's yeah, completely... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Dante, yeah. But I like that too because now they get to really bring Rob slowly and he has to physically get some pounds because he's been getting moved around. I don't know if you watch the preseason, guys, but he's sure. been getting moved around when he goes... They're watching the highlights and so... He, he gets moved around a lot when he goes driving to the lane. So, he's just got to really put some weight. Everything else is not really an issue. Yeah, uh, but my – would you say, Kyrie? No, I was just saying that'll come with time. That really would come in time. But I was going to say Zach Eady. But I, I like the Hawks' first round, first yeah. overall pick, Zachary Reese. I, I, I think yeah. I've been under I'm not sleeping on him either. I, I'm think, I, on I think I've looked I down on him a little – shame on me. I think I've really been – I don't know. He – you know what? He may not be that number one pick that'll pop, but he'll him and Trey Young. I think they just they might do some things. I think the fact the Hawks don't got like a clear cut number two option. I mean, right. it'll, it'll most definitely be Jalen Johnson. Like Jalen Johnson, Jalen Johnson yeah. he's the yeah, oh, he's, also he's got a contract old. today. Also, they yeah. might I mean, potentially fifty. Yeah. It, what I dare say, hopefully, potentially, maybe Hawks fans, that's the big three, potentially. Yeah. Jay Johnson, Trey, and Zachary Reese and Shane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know that would be, but believe me, I watched a lot of Hawks basketball. Um, I, obviously, because Murray was there too. I watched in general, but because Murray was there too, I watched a lot of them. Right. Yeah, definitely Trey. Yeah, I think the big three for them right now is what you said, the young rookie, mm-hmm. Trey, and Jalen John. JJ, and- yeah. And I think, I think the duo between Jalen and Trey, like for Trey to stay, because there's a lot of talks about him leaving, and I can honestly see him leaving if this none Trey, of this Trey out. get a lot of hate, and but it's listen, like I, yo, I like Trey. I think I like he, I think Trey, he can alleviate himself with a like lot of that Trey. hate if this tandem between him and Jalen Johnson can exceed what him and John Collins was able to do. Because remember, him and yeah. John Collins was like a big yeah. tandem at, at a certain point, and it was seen as a good one-two punch until John Collins he got dunked on by him. No. He, this guy. He, my fault, my fault. He, no, I he's bringing that up. I know what you're trying to say. He got dunked on so many times, but he got dunked on by somebody. But you bringing that up, though. And <laughs> his career with the Hawks was down from there, bro. He got hurt. Oh, yeah. he I know. Over. I remember what he's talking. I remember exactly what he's talking about. He got and that's it wasn't, it wasn't like Ed Edwards on this year. It was Rich not helping. He added on. He got dunked on by somebody, bro, and it was he. He was he was over. Shout out to John Collins, man. But that tandem breaking up kind of led to the demise of the Hawks, bro. So I think if Taylor Johnson can get that together, they they be good. I say, I'll say this, man. You know, I've been big on the Hawks for the past about seven seasons, like. And they just can't get to, and I know they had that little. It's run. like they're stuck. Even I like the, I, even in the I Joe like Johnson, Josh Smith so years, bro. I know. Like I Josh, know. The, Josh, I know. And, and Jeff Teague and them, they were so tough. They Yo, had, the Hawks uh, always uh, had. Squads, they had uh, nah, Kyle, Kyle Corver too. They had Kyle Corver, Kyle Corver. Corver. Paul, Paul, Paul Millsap, Yo. Damari Carroll, Yo, yeah, Yo, Carroll. Yo, Damari yeah. Carroll, you know yeah. you Paul Reed. I know you know yeah. you Paul. They had they have Jeff Teague over there. Shout out Perro Antich. Oh yeah, Perro Perro Antich, yeah, Perro Antich. And you know what's crazy, bro? People really start thinking Jeff Teague is scrub because. That was what I was, I was afraid was the nice. most because he downplays himself too much. I'd be thinking, like, dude, you were one of the best guards in the time where there was John Wall, Isaiah, Ray John Rondo. You had Chris Paul, Russell. Yo, you were, yes. Uh, uh, don't understand. No. Like, I hate Williams. Like, yeah. like, yo, like yo, I get it because he, he's humble. That's just – I know Jeff a humble dude. You can tell he a humble dude. Eric, and he talking shit because he's an athlete, but you can tell – and, and you got Deshaun Jackson talking like he could cook him, like, yo. Like, Lou had to yeah. tell him, yo, pay your Richard on the balls and sons would give you work, bro. Like, that's... That's facts. Yeah, man. That's why I say the NBA, and that's why it's... it's, it's that's why it's so... Because people really be disrespecting those guys that's on the bench. Mm. Because they don't... Oh, yeah. And oh, it's yeah. like, yo, y'all don't understand. That guy that you disrespected... In high school and college, he yo, and even now he would still give you work. He just doesn't play because sure. y'all ever lovely. seen that video? Y'all ever seen that video of Brian Scalabrini playing some dude that was calling him out on Twitter? Yeah, he's like, he like, I'm closer to LeBron James than you'll ever be to me. Yo, wow. <laughs> yo, 
and that's yo, that's facts. That's not mm-hmm. hating. That's the facts, and that's mm-hmm. crazy because that really put things as again as a fan who loves the game. It always puts things and makes me humble when I look at these guys. Like, hey, this guy just because he's not in the league or not in the league or he's not playing, he's the love of man. He'd still give me work at the YMCA. If we've met each other. Like, it wouldn't even be a competition. So. Yo, that's pretty amazing. That's make me appreciate the game of basketball even more because it's like it's really levels to the stuff and just makes you appreciate the athletes who play it, the ones who really committed to it. Like, you know, it just gives you a whole new sound of respect for the athletes too. Makes me enjoy the game even more. Just, I know for you guys too. Uh, but man, six, six, six man year. Six that was, yeah, so we got three. Oh, yeah, a couple more left. A couple more, couple more words left. I'll go All ahead right. real quick. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty, yeah. for six man of the year. Mm. Um, I think he's got a, he, I think he's got okay. a huge chip I on think his shoulder. I know for a fact he's got a huge chip on his shoulder. You took my choice because I was thinking Dante too. I'm like Dante or Malik Monk. Dante and then Malik Monk was my runner. Yeah, if, if Monk stay healthy, I think he got something. Yeah, I think he got something going on. I, right I think he'll be ready by us. No, I gotta look at him there. I don't want to make yeah. making it. Yeah, I gotta look at him. Monk, the, the Monk could probably be my, my second choice. But yeah. I got I got Evo right now because of what he could bring to that Timberwolves team as far as a shooter and a scorer. Oh, yeah, right. all the they'll definitely need him. All right, Rick. We'll, we'll okay. I, I definitely understand Dante. Uh, I definitely want to see him play, especially coming off of the season he had with the Knicks. So it'll mm-hmm. be good to see if that uh, he oh, he kind of keeps up the three point shooting and his scoring and everything. Um, I'm gonna go with Nas Reed. I'm gonna still go with Nas Reed. Two times. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say it. And, and look, Dante was also thought, but I like I like Nas Reed. I like his game. I mean, even before he won it. And I was like, wow, he fought, he was dead good. He finally won the award. I'm going to pick Najee as my number one. But my sleeper pick and someone for everyone in, within the league, you know, just as a fan of the game to keep an eye on, Kyrie knows what I'm talking about, from the Knicks, Deuce McBride. Just please keep an eye on Deuce because, remember, the yeah. trade with Dante happened. Man. Like, Look who's going to be really coming think- off the bench now. Oh, man. bro, we got we, we got to start that we got to start that tag on the on the on the, uh, on the Knicks tape, man. We got to start that. Oh Deuce yeah, for six, man. oh yeah, yo, I'm a big I'm a big hey, fan. Hey, those Deuce. two, I'm a hey, big fan of those. Hey, RGP fans and our subscribers, be on the lookout for the Knicks tape. It's gonna be resuming these two with Lodge. It's just gonna be a three man. These, these guys cool. are gonna be all Knicks. They're gonna be covering it throughout the season. These guys are diehard Knicks fans. I hope you guys look forward to it. Look yeah, forward to it. Definitely. Look if if anyone's a Knicks fan or who wants to hear anything about the Knicks, please always join us on that. Obviously, we talk about all the teams in the game in general, but also, you know, we Knicks fans also, but please join us on that channel. Those also. two are Knicks fans. It's eight, nine yes. of us. So we each and every one's got us. Those are the two, three solo Knicks guys right there. They're from, yeah. Tell them to stay in Philly, though. They're from Philly. <laughs> but with that being said... <laughs> Let's go on. So you got Rick. You got your six man. Kyrie picked your six man. Yeah. So I went. I, I went with Nas Reed, and I got uh, Miles as uh, Deuce, Deuce McBride as my sleeper. Just a little summary. My defensive. Pick, yep. Defensive oh, player oh, of the year. Oh, def- oh, you want me to go? I got Rudy. I'm gonna go further. Go I got Rudy. Oh yeah, you got ah, Rudy. Let me stop. Let me stop uh, playing. No, I'm about to say. Go. No. Oh, all right. I'm about to say. Oh my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Kyle tried to hurt me. He hurt me. I'm like, because oh, Rudy always wins that shit. He that hurt him. It, and he don't deserve it. And it be, he's not, he's I'm not, not winning this. He's not winning this. Listen, I'm not trying to hate on Rudy. Rudy is one of the best defensive players in the league. I understand it. Sure, we yeah. give him the top yeah. of the top of the yeah. utmost respect. But, man, I don't think defensive player of the year four times and Rudy just sounds right to me. It'll never sound right to me. And but it's, it's his game, though. His game is like, it is. It there is. in the paint and be tall. It's like, just a game. Four-time defensive play of the year. I'm looking at Bam. And yep. I'm looking at AD. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, Wemby. And I'm like, oh, maybe it's that's just me. I, that's, that's who I got. I got Wemby winning it. Yep. Yo, man. I don't want to say Wemby because I feel like Bam is – Bam Bam been talking a lot lately all, this offseason. He's been talking like he, he about to be the main focal point. So Bam would probably be my backup. It'll be between him and Herb Jones. It's because just Herb, unrealistic not to pick Wemby. <laughs> it is. It, it really, between, like, it, 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 we realistically know it's going to come down between him and Rudy. Like, <sighs> we keep it in the mean. It's going to come down between unless Derek White. He, I was just thinking about that too. Those, 
I was just thinking about it. Yeah, but well, what if he did? Yeah, that'd be nice. Unless he has one of them seasons where it's just like, all right, we gotta get him, give it to a guard this year. Like Marcus Smart years ago, there was like, right. oh, yeah. a guard this year. He did, he did too well. Like, but I think, it, I think it's gonna be Wemby. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, that's, I don't disagree with you. That's my, that's my. I think we, we got a clean sweep. Uh, Vic, I'm also going with Vic also. So I think we got a clean sweep on who we clean think going to be the first player of the year. So, yeah. Listen, that heads on to the most improved player of the year. Now, this one, Kyrie. This one's, this one's always hard. It's always yeah, hard. For sure. Because you're sure. banking on uh, the leaps. You're banking on the offseason work. You're banking on they, they put the work in. I don't it's know, man. Hard. Because, like, I always. It's like whoever I think supposed to win it, they end up not getting it. Like the year John won, it was it was supposed to be Dejounte Murray's. His last that was outrageous. The second overall pick when like, come on, dude, that's just that's it? still bad. Maxie Maxi won it. Yeah, Max, Maxie won last year. Yeah, Maxie. That Maxi. one was fifty fifty. I more so was Kobe White. I was Kobe I was White had a okay. Yeah, I like Jay. Yeah, but I Kobe White, I would have been mad at. Yeah, but Tyrese Maxey you know, deserved but, it too. You know I what, Ty, yo, Ty, I, I like Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, Tyrese deserved it too. I, like, I, like I ain't gonna say that. Yeah, Tyrese is a very good player, it. man. I like it. Tyrese. He, he definitely deserved it. Yeah, he did. Um, he did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm gonna say my man Sangoon. I think okay. Sangoon. I think he gets okay. his first All Star appearance. I think mm. he, he gets like his 22 and 12. Maybe I think they really mm. start to go through him, and he. he I think Sengung is most improved, bro. Uh, that's what I'm gonna go with. If not, huh. if not, I'm gonna go with Devin Vassell from the Spurs. Mm, okay. Most improved. See, okay. if, if there... Vassell can stay healthy, he's an easy twenty plus a night. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now that okay. you say this, see, there's a couple of names I'm keeping you up know, because because I'm thinking their team isn't gonna because most improved like your team wins who, definitely. Who, 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 who about to say, Rick? You know. I feel like the one thing when it comes to about awards, some of these awards is based off of the team success and everything. That's so, right. But, True. you know, I, I, I kind of – when I do any awards for any sport, I kind of like going – I'll pick like a, a favorite, but I'll kind of pick like another like sleeper, like someone that we might not really think of, but it would be nice to see that player progress or someone that no one right not really think of. But uh-huh. for my – I'm going to go with my two. Option. Okay. And I really just started the second one like, for some reason, just like that in my mind as we speak. No, let's my, get it. My my first one, I'm going with Vic. I'm going with, with, with Vic Let Wimby for, for that. I'm going with as my number one. My number two is not going to be a winning team unless somehow they just surprise people. Uh, I believe they're going to be a bottom two, three worst team in the league probably. Ooh. No disrespect. I'm going to say Cam Jazz Thomas. Goodies. I'm going to say Cam Thomas. I- I can't, but Cam. Yo, I'm gonna I'm say, I'm gonna say, yeah. See, I'm I love Cam Thomas, bro. I, right, but my like, thing he, is like, because bro, we, it's not gonna be a like, name no one says, but you yeah. know, because look, think about how bad the Nets gonna be. I, I, and, it's not you know, even just, that. That's no, what I'm for thinking. me, that's why it's not even that. It's not even that. Is he is like he's improved because he's up to school. Like he needs to improve. I hmm. think. I he think it's gonna be high score. I right. think, see, the way I'm looking at it is like... his scoring has been improving. If you look each year, it's yeah, definitely yeah. right. So, But I, I think, look, I look at the same way as Tyrese Maxey. I've been, I thought Maxey been real good for these past few years, and obviously he just won it last year. But yeah. I think this is going to be, what, the second year now, I believe, with Cam Thomas is like by himself. Or this is going to be, no, technically, this is going to be the first season now you can look at the Nets and go into the season and say, that might be the best player on the team. Because who was the best player on the team going into last year, though? Okay. Mikael Bridges. Mikael, yeah. Mikael fine. Bridges. KD was on the year before. This is going to be the first season going into it where Cam Thomas is going to be looked at. That's probably yeah. the best it's, player it's, on it's the team. Is this him and Cam Johnson? He's a good point. And he's ben Sim- we're not really going to say Ben Simmons like that, obviously. You no. Know? But between him and Cam Johnson. It's going to – yeah. So, and Cam might – look out. Cam could be a potential uh, trade. Uh, so someone maybe by the deadline for a contender team also. So look at that also. Johnson, yeah, you're not right. That's yeah, Cam, Cam Johnson. Yeah, he could be yeah, on. The tra- yeah, don't be surprised really anyone watching that he could be on the trade move by the deadline. Yeah. Don't be surprised yeah. on that. I, I could believe a team that's going to need a wing, small forward position probably. He'll fit one of them contending teams. Maybe like a, I don't know, maybe a Spur. I don't know if a Spurs will go for him, but Dallas Mavericks or one of them teams like that will probably pick up a wing. But I could definitely see Dorian Finney-Smith. 
I could probably see him on the move also for the Nets. Oh, but I'm a, but, that's, a, that's, a, that's a guy a team would love. Like any player. Yeah, team, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He, but, he had a lot of big moments with the Mavs. His his past couple, his last couple like post seasons with them. Oh yeah, oh he yeah. Come up big, hit a couple threes here and there. Defend, yeah. hustle plays. I yeah. feel I feel like his shooting has been been lacking a little bit. You know, from the streaky. perimeter game. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. streaky. You know, he he, he, he could defend for you. Good six seven uh, wing, he could defend for you. Yeah. Um, but he could he could give you the little threat from the per, uh, perimeter with the little three ball too. So I I look at Cam Johnson. Um, Dwayne Finney Smith is two uh, players who could get traded by the Nets to contending teams by the deadline potentially. If that were to happen, that gives like if Cam light, uh, if Cam, I'm speaking Cam Thomas now, if his light not already green, there his, we like, go. Because you know, green, you, you yeah. know, you know, with his kids, potential, like, mm-hmm. you know, he, he could go off 30 something a night. For, like, yep. he, we've seen the little previews of it, but now mm-hmm. he going into the season now, like, he could really try to, you know, Maybe try to accelerate this type of potential, this rebuild for the Nets going in today, uh, like a high pick maybe, and and them trying to like he could be a real good top building piece for the Nets going forward. Yeah, so he that's why gotta, I kind of say Ken Thomas. He just got to get more discipline. Definitely, he he, Definitely. he, want, he, he don't. He, it's not a shot he don't like. He don't see a shot he don't for sure, like. for sure. And at the same, like I, I can't remember who the coach is now, but when it was Jacques Vaughn before they fired him. I remember mm. watching eight games, and he would like purposely bench him, like if he wasn't getting his teammates involved, or if he, if he missed like a defensive rotation or something like that, mm. he was quick mm. to bench him. So I'm, yeah. I'm eager to see what the next coach. I'm, I gotta look. So the cur- the current coach is actually Jordy Fernandez. They just hired him from. Uh, he was assistant for the Sacramento Kings. Got you. He, so he did, actually he guy. actually just coached uh, Team Canada. Nice. Okay. Yeah, he, was, he he coached okay. Team Canada. Yes. All right. Yes. So. I, I I want to see what he what he'll do with Cam Thomas. Whether as far as putting him in the right positions offensively, not to not to tweak out, but at the same time keeping him disciplined and making sure he's getting his teammates involved and defending at, and at the definitely. at the best level he can too. So I, I can definitely see that also. Yeah, um, you know it's a good sleeper pick. It's someone that mm-hmm. not on the radar for knowing really wow. Cam Thomas, like okay, like I love the Devin for sub pick though. On the Spurs, I think that could definitely be a, a good pick. Also, I think Vassell has been a you know solid player. Like this could be a chance for him to take his game to the next step too. Also, working with Wemby, yep. Chris Paul is on that team. Also, Devin mm-hmm. Vassell could actually benefit too for, on this team here. Yeah, that he's another guy like just straight bucket getter. He just got to stay yeah, healthy. But he definitely, stay healthy. He, he's a good definitely. wing defender too. At like six seven, he's got like I think yeah, like, he's like just six six yeah somewhere around there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Six, I think like that six five six 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 seven somewhere around that. Type of area, yeah, definitely. Yep. So I, I think he'll be a great player. But um, we we're gonna move on to coach of the year. I don't oh, know where yes. Colin went, but we're gonna go on to coach of the year now. Um, what what team? In I think with coach of the year, it's kind of goes hand in hand with what you said earlier. Is it? It's definitely. I don't think it could just be a good a team that's been good. It's got to be a team that made a jump. So, given that, who do you think? Uh, the, year. the first, the first, I don't know, you know, and the first coach that comes to my mind, and we mentioned his name earlier, but I'm gonna say uh, Ime Udoka. Okay, Ime Udoka was the Definitely. one coach. I, I've, I think this could be the season now where the Houston Rockets try to, and I feel like this pick is almost similar to you know previous from my NFL videos where I said the Raheem Morris, Atlanta Falcons, like mm-hmm. you know a team that you know that wasn't really in that picture. That you know, rebuild everything, or, or just needed a couple pieces. Now they might be coming up. I think the Houston Rockets got a very good young team. We've seen previews of how Ime Udoka is as a coach. We obviously we saw him with the Celtics and how he had everything. But yeah. I think the, the pieces that the young pieces that he has to work with on on the Houston Rockets. I think this could be the season now where the Houston Rockets get into the jump on on the standings, whether it's a playing team or get into the the one through six. Of trying to get into the actual playoff standards now, so I'm gonna say, uh, Ime Udoka is my number one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as a, uh, I think, and, and obviously we said we're looking at teams that's definitely gonna make that jump. Now yeah. I know how good, and I know I thought of, obviously Joe Missoula. We know how good the Celtics is. They were number one. Yeah, but I won't say Joe Missoula. We are we understand that um, mm-hmm. his win percentage and everything. I'm gonna say, I was kind of thinking on the side of maybe a Tom Thibodeau. Uh, as because we see where the Knicks were at, and obviously we know where how the team looking now and, and how they're going up. 
And I think the one thing you also got to look at potentially is injuries. You know, yeah. I, I believe the one thing you got to give a team credit for is if they have injuries. And, like, the defense and how it's flowing and everything is going. We yeah. saw how the Knicks look when they had a lot of injuries this past season. Everyone, anyone who watches as a basketball fan, not just because, you know, I, I watch the Knicks, I say that I'm a basketball fan also with play, favorite players. But, you know, I think Tom Thibodeau, you know, and, and a few seasons ago I wasn't too high on him because of some of his decisions with his, his lineups and everything. But mm-hmm. I'm going to give him some credit now on, on, on as a number two choice potentially where, you know, say the Knicks might have, you know, you got Mitch Robinson, he's hurt. Precious Achua just got hurt. We yeah. don't know who with the depth chart of how the Knicks depth going to look like, you know. And I know Thibs plays his starters a lot of minutes, heavy minutes, 35, 40, 40 plus minutes. But when you have a team that has a lot of injuries through a season, and I'm not saying or I'm not hoping the Knicks get hurt, but potentially you have to look out for if these players are getting hurt and how a coach manages to get this team through and you still get into a high seed or a one through six and you still make the regular seasons with a playoff team, I got to give the coach some type of credit for that. So I'll go as a Tom Thibodeau as a number two. I think a sneaky pick could be um, Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Taylor Jenkins, I believe you could also look at him as a sneaky one. That was, but those are, yeah, that was my little round off right there, though, for sure. That's Taylor my Jenkins was, was my first choice. There we go. There because we go. The thing, and even you could, like, viewers, y'all can even look at past episodes. And one thing I always praise Taylor Jenkins for is being able to play without his super, without his super. There we go. When Jaws out, when Jaws out, it don't matter. Next man up, let's play. Jaren Jackson right. up, cool. Next man up, we getting right, we we playing, and it don't matter. He he take guys out the G League. We seen it this past season when everybody was gone. Jaws suspended, then hurt. Jared Jackson uh, in and out. Um, he we brought anybody like everybody and anybody out of the D League. We see Scottie Pippen Jr. or himself. Yeah, just got that contract. Exactly. Yep. He was going crazy, and exactly. I think that's that's a coaching thing. Not, I don't think any – I don't – about 75% of the teams can't do that. Like, mm. you can't have four mm. or five of your main guys go down. and You pick guys from two-way contracts out of the G League, out of free agency, and you just make it work. And even though it doesn't translate to wins, you can see the confidence in those players growing. You see those guys understand their role and want to be stars and want to be um, active and want to be impactful in their role. So that's why I brought up a guy like Scottie Pippen Jr. Um, and a guy like Gigi Jackson last season as a rookie came in. He wasn't even really expected to play. Came yeah. in. Man, yeah. up, that's coaching 100%. Definitely. And, um, I think coming off of a season like that last year where they were really bad and coming back this year where everybody's healthy, even, even though Ja got hurt again. But that's something with a guy like Ja who gets a lot of nicks here and there. Taylor Jenkins is most likely, in my opinion, he's probably used to it. And that's not a bad thing. That's not saying, oh, Jaws injury prone or he's always hurt or he's always unavailable or whatever. It's just it's just the reality of the situation. And either way, he Taylor Jenkins puts a guy in a position to to fit, not fill Jaws shoes like all the way, but still be but still remain impactful and still be ready and still know what he's doing out there. So that's I gotta go with that's why I gotta go with him because I think the Grizzlies are, are are kind of like a sleeper team this year because of the injuries they they battled last year and not being a team last year. Um, so I, I gotta go with Taylor Jenkins. Um, I think he'll be I think he'll definitely be um, in a running for it. And um, runner up, I, I kind of wanted to go with OKC's coach again, Mark yeah. Jack, even yeah. though he won it. Um, and the reason is because I think OKC could get a it could be better. Than what mm-hmm. they did last season, especially Adam Hartenstein. When he comes back, he he got that. He got you added Alex Caruso. I think that can, that team could be miles better, not miles better, but a lot better than what they are, uh, what they were last season. But um, as as far as a runner up goes, I, I probably have to go Eme. I probably have to go Eme too because I'm just thinking of that factor of, or even a Chris Finch from Minnesota. I'm just thinking of a factor of teams taking that next step. And I think next season for Minnesota, that that next step would be a champion, a, a, a team that looks like a championship contender. And um, of course, for the next step for Emei Duke and the Rockets team, that next step would be the playoffs. So I definitely can see them yeah. reaching those goals and, and being um, and having a shot at that too. But um, I think yeah, I agree with I agree with that. Yeah. And okay, sure, okay, she's done it too. Obviously, we're definitely gonna be looking out, seeing what they're doing. But I definitely agree with you on the Taylor Jenkins, which is why I kind of compared a little bit to. You know, not too much as a Tom Thibodeau, but a little bit because you got to think about how 
when a team is down players, mm-hmm. how does that team keep going? Yep. And that's why you got to give – that's why I love where, where you got to give teams credit for that, how a mm-hmm. team keeps making progress and going and utilizing the players that they have and what's, right. what they have available to them and how they keep moving forward. And I really thought the, the Grizzlies as a team for the past couple of years, obviously, we know they dealt with a lot. A team that got some potential and maybe they might finally get healthy. And a player for everyone to really look at, too, and he's, he just signed as a two-way player. He's the shortest active player in the NBA at 5'8". Please check out uh, Yuki. I believe I said his name last name right. Kamamura. I, be, I hope that's correct. Right. I mean, he, he plays my favorite style of basketball. He can shoot the three, but really he looks for his teammates. Mm-hmm. He, he'll, play his, he'll play his defense and fight for it. But really, yep. I just love someone who's looking out for their teammates and sharing the rock. I think that was a story that just, he is a Japanese player who this uh, Memphis Grizzlies had just signed last month in September. Mm-hmm. I hope he gets playing time. Yeah, I saw he had just signed that uh, contract with the Grizzlies. I was hoping if he wasn't going to be active, someone else was going to pick one. I'm happy he made the league. But For definitely sure. a player. I was happy to see uh, that progress of how he was playing. Uh, I was that was great. Dishing off the no look passes, the ED, and the, I'm like every I'm like wow. You seen him and ZD, uh, Zach Ed? Yeah, I, yeah, I saw, yep. I saw that. I yeah. saw that. <laughs> yeah, yo, I saw being, that. being a regular size human being, like you got to root for like dudes Man. that are the same height as us and make it to the I'm, league. That's bro. what I'm saying. He, he, yeah. I, look, if someone's father in the NBA. You gotta be that good to be in the NBA father. You gotta be you gotta bring something to the game if you if you father and being in the NBA, you gotta be good. That's you gotta have I, the talent. That's why I think a guy like Nate Robinson, like yep. he, he ain't get his flowers enough when he was in the league, yo. No, no. And like people like, yeah, he he, he was famous for like the dunk contest and stuff like that, and, and they loved him for that. But him as a hooper and like skill wise yeah. and as yeah. a straight up athlete, he was a oh, monster. Yeah. He, he was oh, a yeah. monster. Forgot oh, yeah. Him. Definitely. Like definitely. Yeah. Definitely got to give it up for the shorter players like that, man. Definitely, y'all got all the credit because you know they fighting again in the NBA. And you get in the NBA at that that height, man. It shows you, you know, you got that heart. You know, you got that fight in you to to do whatever it is that you get at the game, whether it's shooting, passing, playing defense, whatever it is. I give a ton of credit for that. Absolutely, definitely. Well said. So that's gonna wrap it up for the Restricted Zone podcast. This has been episode 174. This has been an hour and a half long episode. So if you're still here watching with us, we definitely appreciate you. It's a lot of a lot of back and forth, a lot of contact. We get a lot of, got off got off track a little bit here and there, but that's what basketball is about. That's what talking sports is all about. Um, it's never just going to be a linear thing. It's so many things and so many different parts of history you can pull from and make it part of the conversation. And that's what we love about it here. I love about talking sports most most at um definitely. podcast. So, um, hey, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe, please. Um, make sure to drop a like, drop a comment, whether it's negative, positive. We want to hear it all. Um, we'll be back to you guys soon with another episode. Me and Colin, um, I'm sure Rick will probably join us, too. We got college basketball coming up soon. Definitely more NBA, definitely more NFL as the season kicks off. We got a lot of injuries in the NFL, a lot of a lot of crazy yeah. stuff. Going on. Definitely be covering that. And um, like I said, like we mentioned earlier, me, uh, Rick, and hopefully Lodge, um, We'll have the Knicks tape going on. Hopefully, by the end of this week or early next week, we'll talk about the first game for the Knicks. And, um, yeah, if you're a Knicks fan, feel free to tune in. And thanks again. Thanks again for uh, staying with us and watching us, man. We really appreciate y'all. Have a good night. Definitely. Lee, you so crazy.